La Lanterna, a spotlight in Italian football, is a podcast that dives into the beautiful game seen from the eyes of two fans from the oldest team in Italy's point of view. My name is Fabrizio Cardone, Canadian and Genovese, together with my friend Matt Killen, an American-born and Genoa fan. Every week, we'll tell you all you need to know about the only team you need to know about, Genoa CFC. Plus, we'll have guests and provide updates from around the magical world of Italian football. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to La Lanterna podcast, episode number 11. Hey, Matt. Fabri, how are you doing? Not bad at all. It was good to have a little bit of a break. Um, I, in a way, I missed Genoa, but we still had lived a lot of news through Genoa. So, I mean, it's not like it was a total break, but obviously for our listeners, that was a break. And essentially, there was an extra week of no news or, you know, not about <laughs> the, 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 the podcast itself. So lots happened, didn't it? Yeah, I was about to say, for a second, I thought maybe this would be like, oh, you know, we're just getting ready for the season. But looking back, there's actually a ton of stuff that happened. I mean, I think probably the biggest thing is we actually got to look a little bit at the squad for a few of the preseason games. Um, that some, some matches happened kind of recently over the last day or so, but maybe the big one, there have been a couple now, but the big one was probably the 4-1 result against Lazio. Um, uh, for many of Let, us, let's go back one second though. Yeah. Let's go back for the uh, the first, let's say, official type of a uh, uh, friendly. So let, I, I would say let's let's start with uh, Mallorca, <clears throat> yeah. if if you don't mind. Let's do it. So it, it started with one nothing. Uh, it was the first official team um, because we had another one previous to that, but it was more about to try to the trials and to see what player was sort of supposed to be there and whatnot. But um, with with, um, with uh, against Mallorca, you you saw more of the of the interesting um, what I guess the lineup though starting eleven that uh, Blessing is starting to play and whatnot. Obviously, there was a lot of turnaround and turnover and whatnot for different players. So obviously, in these summer friendlies, it's not always necessarily important to see what the final score was, even though it did raise a lot of eyebrows and it did make a lot of as we say in Genovese, Mucuno, which is like that type of these people, like uh, the new management, and you know, all that uh, anger type of uh, management style of the Genovese that we're famous for. Anyways, um, so we lost one nothing. However, four or five days later, still in Austria, and, and I'll pass that back it over to you, we played against Lazio. Played against Lazio, and um, the result was, was very, very different. Um, I think we saw, obviously, anybody that looked at the score sheet, Coda had three goals. We had a penalty, I think, from Goodmanson. Um, you know, seeing the highlights over here, it's hard to actually see the, the match itself, uh, at least in the States. But um, obviously, 4-1, um, pretty damn good against Lazio, even if it is a test match. Did we Absolutely. see any of the match, Fabri? I did see uh, bits and pieces, most of it. I would say like a 60, 70 percent for us. We have to remember that we're six hours behind. This was like an afternoon match. I think it started at 11 a.m. our time. So I was like right in the middle of working and whatnot. But I was trying to have one eye on the match and the other eye with the ear on a, on my on my um, Zoom meeting at work. But yeah. um, no, I, absolutely. I saw a great lineup. Um, it, it started with the 4 2 2 2, or I mean, it, it depends on how the formation was. It could be a 4 4 2, it could be a 4 3 3, it could be, you know, it, it's, it's very interchangeable. And that's what also uh, Blessing, what he said too in an interview, that he said that it's going to be changing not only based on the, on the opponent, but it's also going to be changing throughout the match as well. And that's what really reminds me also of the olden days with Gasperini, mm -hmm. which is kind of that chameleon type of uh, approach, which you really adapt to what the situation is. And, and that's kind of can be deceiving and fearful also for the opponents. Yeah, I know there is a little bit of rancor too. I mean, I think he actually, did he use the same lineup against Mallorca too? The 4-2-2-2 or however yes, he did. Yeah. Because um, you look at it like without 
thinking about it much and it's like what the hell is this lineup like how how does this even look on a pitch are we crazy is this insane um but right i mean i guess that's the the benefit is you can have players in a bunch of different configurations and maybe it's flexible in defense or out of possession or however we're we're in it so exactly sometimes that actually can become like a four two four depends on where you have the players right yeah but uh yeah the four two the four one uh, score was excellent it was definitely a pump of uh i guess of uh, satisfaction and uh uh i guess from all over the the, the board we have also people that are uh, evaluating general from the outside also from uh different people not genuani per se mm-hmm. and uh, uh it, it, you know I still see certain ones that are still saying that Genoa is not the favored for Serie B, but they're absolutely all concurrent on the fact that it, on the paper, it is the most competitive uh, uh, team with respect to the players. Yeah. Because if you look at it from a Serie B perspective, when you have the likes of Coda as the, the, the capo canoniere for the last two seasons of Serie B, yeah. and then you have Padel, and then you have, you know, Ecuban, and then you still have, you know, a whole bunch of players and whatnot, it looks like a, a freaking, if I may say, starting 11 anyways. Yeah. Um, obviously, then in the second half, uh, there was a turnover, so a lot of different players that kind of, you know, um, changes a lot of aspects, and that happens also for, for Lazio as well. But I have to do a super call out to, to the uh, social media manager, if you want to call it, for, for Genoa CFC. Uh, when they put the, uh, and I, I, I'm sorry, I don't really know the, 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 those, um, the cartoon thing about um, uh, 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 showing the 4 1 loss and then, oops, it's, it's the one with the card, Yu Gi Oh yeah. or something. Yep. And oh my God, like especially on, on Twitter, the, comments from the Laziali were insane they were fuming <laughs> and I was like so laughing I'm like come on guys it's like a summer game and whatnot yeah don't get upset at the media manager of Genoa at the most get upset with your Sari and whatnot right at the most if you have to it's still a summer game but you gotta you take know. the chance to to I guess take the piss is the phrase in English but I think <laughs> you gotta do it and, and look also it's a summer friendly game. It's not like we just beat them in Syria or something like these things always happen. Um, what do you think of Coda? What did, I know, you know, it's only been a little bit. We've got to see him, but what are your impressions of him so far? Well, again, it's a summer game. So at the very most, like um, we had different scorers in the summer that eventually happened to be nothing during the season. But I think Personally, I still see that he is working well. He still, even himself said he still has to do a lot of work, but he's fitting very well in the model that uh, Blessing is actually preparing. So I'm I'm pumped. I'm pumped. That's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, it seems like he's definitely slotting in. And from what I could tell, anyway, I was looking at some grainy footage with like, I think an Iranian like broadcaster or something doing like the match. <laughs> um it just seemed like he got he was scoring like really easy goals which we've not had a player do in a while which was kind of the exciting thing is if he's going to be this guy that just gets into that right place and just gets like a simple tap in type of a goal like we've not had that player in such a long time oh so, good for good like for sure like the fact of seeing that number nine striker finally again i forgot what it was all about <laughs> oh. <laughs> no as we've been deprived for a few years so it's exciting Definitely. i guess last you would say would be piantic and yeah. it lasted yeah. just as you we we all know like five six months yeah um so yeah coda i'm super happy i'm gonna knock on wood that nothing really happens to him even though we still have a nice uh lineup up front and there's going to be a lot of supporters up there with respects to the fact of taking over throughout the matches or if he needs some matches days off and whatnot. But that's excellent, actually. Um, I'm, I'm super pumped. I'm really happy. Uh, I think uh, they were still talking about um, um, taking, get, getting rid of still a, a few players, as um, we mentioned in, in before going on live, that um, there were some, some, some players that were not called up in Austria. So those uh, players stayed in Genoa. Uh, and um, and we'll talk later about uh, what happened there. But nevertheless, that means that these pl- these players are off the squad, 
And that means they're going to be, I mean, quote unquote, they're supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, placed somewhere, I guess. Um, so, so, so it, it's, it's, there's still a lot of the outbound type of uh, approach that needs to be worked on. They're doing an amazing job. If we remember when we kind of at the beginning after season and whatnot, when we were talking about 70 players. So if we're talking about that, we're going to keep at least somewhere in the range between 25 to 28 ish type of players. That's quite a few players to play somewhere, whether they are on loan to sell or whatnot, there's still a few. And I think on the books that we're still around the 40 mark. So that means there's still a, a little bit above a dozen to play somewhere. Yeah. I mean, a lot better than where we were at the start of the summer. That's oh, big sure. time. Big time. So kudos to them. Since then, uh, we know Spores got promoted from uh, from general manager to sporting directors for 777 Partners uh, Group. Okay. That means with uh, the Vasco da Gama, with the uh, star of a uh, Paris star, That's right. um, yeah. the, the, the AG's uh, team, a percentage anyway, still of Valencia. And yeah. uh, so, I mean, and, and general, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, Seville, sorry. Um, and, and so it, it's, it's a group that is starting to get noticed. Um, and, and Spores is now like the, the, the sporting director for the entire group. And Ottolini coming in as a, as a sporting director for Genoa, um, obviously, he presented himself up in Austria. Um, we haven't seen really anything yet under his spell, but um, he definitely has to be working on the outbound. And they say in the event all these outbounds are happening as planned and whatnot, there might be one or two more uh, added players that could bring that extra level of, of, of you know, of type of a, a team and quality and whatnot. Yeah. So I guess we can talk about what are these rumors for who could be coming or whatnot? Yeah. Who do you have there on the list, Matt? Well, one of one of the guys, which feels still to me like a long shot, and I, it's an exciting name. I don't know if it's going to be one that would, I mean, in Serie B, it, it, it would be an exciting thing, I suppose. But but El Shawari, the, the former uh, Milan player, of course. Um, no, no. Or, the former kid oh, from Genoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yes. Correct. He was the chosen one. <laughs> so possibly coming back to Genoa, I think there's there's rumors anyway that Genoa really are interested in the player is what I've seen. Have, have you seen anything more to the, the detail on this? Does this feel like some some kind of big pot of smoke or is there something actually to it? I actually think it's a big pot of smoke. Um, I actually heard that the, it's not a rumor essentially it started from strinati he was an, a former agent of a few players back in the day yep. for genoa players um and he just said because there was a question that came out to him saying what do you think what could be potential good players for genoa and he said hands up i'm not saying anything is in the play but what if he's out of the well, squad from roma yeah. he would be amazing for genoa and it was just the conversation from there, obviously you're going to get all these great, amazing journalai. Oops. I mean, uh, journalists that, um, uh, if you remember journalai, one of the episodes I mentioned that they're like newsstand people rather than journalists that, that write the newspaper. Yeah. Um, and they're just like writing this crap, uh, just to fill in the pages and whatnot. And we already know, like, for example, under Genova in Genova, the papers are a little bit more inclined to be pro, the other side versus Genoa, and and um, and 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 they were just saying about this uh, story, which about all. I mean, everything is possible, mind you. Like obviously, even from a rumor, possibly things can happen. Mm -hmm. But can we think of a player at the levels of Al El Shawari with a, a, um, um, a, a um, paycheck that he he gets today? Cut it perhaps perhaps in half, if if not more, a third, yeah. and accept coming to Genoa for the last three, four, five, if more even anyways, because he's 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 still at that age. I think he's 27. Damn, is he that young? I feel like he's been around for such a long time. Because he started with Genoa like around 17. He's been around for a while because of that. Nevertheless, uh, I know you're looking up the age just to make sure, but he can still root for a contract, a multi-year multi contract. 29, okay. A multi-year contract, at least a three-year multi-year contract. Yeah. Or four, maybe. But, you know, with two mil and up, right? But, um, you know, 
everything is possible if he came god bless him coming personally i think the chances of him coming are close Next to enough. zero i tend to agree i mean it would be obviously we'd all be excited to have him in the squad but how are we going to make this happen <laughs> it's like the, the big should question. we all pitch in <laughs> yeah right we'll, we'll move the, the but then again I, I was reading this again like do we really need i mean obviously the someone on level El Shalami would be fantastic but we do have enough up front now do we i mean that's the thing it's kind of like what happens i mean i guess maybe like acuban doesn't play as much anymore which i think he's obviously an upgrade over the players that we have but i wouldn't put his position as like our biggest element of need either right i kind of feel like i, I agree with you on that um I mean, no, I, they're they're yeah. mostly talking about trequartistas or the gista, the 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 playmaker type of thing. So yes. I can it's see like that, you. like the the fantasy man, right? The one that knows already where the ball has to go uh, even before he touches it. Right. Um, so I guess that would be. I mean, we we have a lot of incontristi, which are like more on the defensive side of this of the midfield. Um, but mm -hmm. we need someone like more a little bit more forward, the the Amiri situation type of right. thing. Right or the um, Pirlo? Oh, sorry, that I hit go too high. <laughs> okay. uh, but nevertheless, yeah, I think that one. They're, they're talking about possibly maybe one center back or something like that. But um, right, we okay. still have to see backup or something. Um, I mean, you mentioned earlier about uh, spores kind of being elevated and and just talking about some of the player news. I thought there was an interesting quote that had come out recently. I mean, this is like such a like spores comment. It seems like at this point in us knowing him for only, I guess, a little bit less than a year, but he had this quote about um, the players that he's looking for. And it was like a very specific quote. I feel like it checked all the boxes. If you like spores or if you don't, you could completely go at exactly what he said for contrasting reasons. Um, but I think basically he had something to say about like the player becomes a player when he's in the formation and we're looking for players that have really two specific skill sets above everything else. So like a player that's really, really fast, like with their legs, like they can run really fast or a player that thinks really fast that can kind of help make those connections. And he had a bunch of comments, I think, about how like the kind of computer modeling thing maybe have helped with that or something. So. I thought it was kind of an interesting quote. I don't know. What did you, what did you think about that? Uh, I don't really have too many uh, thoughts around that quote. I think that's just his style yeah. or the, the style of the management, the new management that we have. And I think that's what they're looking also in Orsolini, someone that is like thinking forward, looking at the quality. And as they, I think he also added to that is getting youth and qualifying them, getting them yep. better. And instead of like having this talent and see them go away, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, it's it's pretty obvious what th that group is focusing on in terms of priority and, and talent within the squad and how they're thinking about it. So it's it's very much par for the course, I think, with sports. And um, it also kind of feels a little bit more, I hate, I really hate the term like modern football, but it, you do see like a lot of clubs like the Liverpools of the world, like doing things like this too, right? Like they've a lot Absolutely. of the game these days is built around these things. And as much as I maybe miss the more kind of languid attacker who's got just a great kind of eye for the ball, like it's a little bit of a different game now, so. And going back to the topic of whoever is left out, uh, was actually sold out and whatnot, we got yeah. another heavy one that was finally relieved finally. from our books again. And Mr. Maximovich can go back home to that's his right. own Stella Rosa Red Star, um, if that's where he's going. I don't know. As a free agent, he can go wherever he wants. <laughs> and and it's funny, like how it, uh, by reading, like the, I, I mean, we don't really know the whole ins and outs, but seems like he was trying to get this Buono Shita, as we say in Italian, which is some like this pride, pri like a, I don't know, like a token. A hefty token in order to be able to rescind the contract so it's like uh, i know they're professionals i mean i know they're playing for money no one's not no one's working for free sure. but it hurt it hurts to see stuff like that i mean you know yeah i mean you kind of feel like did you did you get enough already like does do you need to know this out over all this stuff i get it it's new ownership whatever but i don't know i mean it's obviously 
a day we've all been kind of counting down and waiting for. I still, I still honestly don't understand why it didn't work out. I thought he was going to be a good signing when we had him, but it's over. We're happy. One less Ab- thing, one less Ab- debt. Absolutely. No, I mean, uh, obviously, I think that the talent was still there. In the only 11 or 18 games that he played, I, I think that some, most of the big games he he was there. Then he did these capelle, as we say in Italian, like this bad games and whatnot. And uh, rumors say that he's not also a good uh, person in the locker room. So, in fact, since since uh, also with a blessing, we never saw him on the roster uh, ever again anyways, right? So yeah. that tells you that there was something more than just uh, uh, from his... Um, is actually performance that there was more going on and talking about offload then there's also rumors about work trying to work a deal with Shevchenko there we go All right. so rumors are for now that they're trying to find a deal with Shevchenko because I think his contract is up until 2024 yes. obviously the biggest mistake that uh, they admitted it but the management has done and trying to get rid of him somehow uh, from the from the paybook, essentially. So if that goes well, that would be something also awesome again. So Fabri, like I'm cute, I'm excited obviously about this, but how how does this work? Are we basically just offering to pay up more right now and get ourselves out of the rest of the contract? Like, do you have any idea of like how we would get out of this thing? It's like a gentleman's agreement. Like, hey, listen, sit and work out. Please don't hold us accountable for the last. Two, two more years of you not managing us? Like what, what's in it for Sheffield, I, I guess? I, I guess what you said, right, is like a gentleman's thing, like depending on if you have a gentleman in front of you or not. Um, I, I, for what I know anyways, it all becomes to the fact of, okay, uh, for, for a coach, it's a little bit different. They are able to stay off uh, the market for a while. For a player, it's a little bit more tough, especially if you're like in your mid-younger ages, uh, you 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 kind of had to go stay on the on the pitch as fast as possible. Go back to the pitch as fast as possible. Right. For a coach, is a little bit different. Besides, he was never a coach for a club, but he was more of a, yeah, a national cool. team um, uh, trainer. So it's a little bit different. Nevertheless, I mean, he had a major squad behind him, including Tassotti, and we'll talk about him in a second. But um, no, I, I, the, the agreement that needs to be reached is, okay, essentially, be, for you to leave, I'm paying you X amount of money, what do you need to leave? And what, what am I willing to give you versus what are you willing to receive? Essentially, I mean, I'm not really inventing anything that nobody knows, but uh, essentially, that's what happens there until you reach that agreement. Otherwise, you're going to have to just write it out till the end. Hopefully, we can get another one behind us i mean that that was a sunk cost that was pretty hard to swallow when we made that choice but obviously for the best so exactly so wrap it up with tasotti tasotti was his number two and uh, rumors have it that he he was called up to join the out of roster uh players that did not join the, the the players that were called up for austria for the retirement up in austria the summer retreat um and uh and and a lot of people were you know mumbling the fact that he was not too satisfied and happy about it and uh, as i mentioned to you early i have that uh that feeling of sense like wait a minute you're being paid um the, I, I, you're you were type of suspended but i can call you up for something you're still training you're not training the main team etc but you're still in my paybook like i don't know what's the big deal that's what i'm trying to get at I- I kind of agree. Like it's actually a good thing. Maybe we should use Sheva for that same reason <laughs> at this point. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Paying them, like, run some drills or something. Get these guys to get going. So, uh, and these are the rumors about the ins and the outs. Uh, ins, there's still a few names floating right back and forth. But as we talk through in the different episodes, we don't have much going on there because the the management is quite tight. They're just keeping it tight nobody knows almost until someone either arrives in the city to do the the medicals or or you know when it's um it's an in in italy and uh, and the agents start to mumble around of what's happening and then that's how we get the news but definitely nothing from from the, from the club um 
and then wrap it up. Uh, so we talked about uh, General Lazio. So you for the four one again. <laughs> but uh, just uh, today, we actually had another last test um, against Carrarese. Carrarese is a, a Serie C team. Uh, so, you know, mediocre, good and, and enough anyways. The, the score obviously is, is a, a super hefty one for ourselves, 9-1. But again, it's not important, the score. But it's, I think, from what I read, because it was more of an informal match that was played in, in a, at the Signorini in Genova and Pelli. Mm-hmm. Um, it was more, I think, for understanding the last few uh, players who should be kept and who not as examples could have been for Charpentier could have been for, 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 and, you know, I can't even think of them right now, but you know, those ones that have not been really, uh, Chisbora or however you say his name. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and and so on, just, just to, to understand if lesson wants to give them, you know, the, 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 the stay in the, in the top team at least rather than place. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's 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 a an analysis game more than anything else. I don't think anybody's getting so excited about the scoreline, but no, you know, exactly, we got got the result, and and that kind of brings us up into uh, this Monday is the first real competitive match we'll see this season uh, with the Coppa Italia against Benevento. Yeah, can I say something about like? There's a few things I would like to talk about that, anyways. But first of all. Damn them putting that on a Monday. I mean, I know Italy, everything in August is shut down, but not over here, man. We got to work. Plus, we have the six hours of time zone. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah, it's on Monday. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that 2.45 Eastern Standard Time or 8.45 or 20.45 uh, local time? Yep. Um, it will be the first official outing. Uh, so that's in Genova, Genova Benevento. So it will be, uh, yes, for Coppa Italia, but it will be against a team of Serie B. So it'll be quite important, a good test. Um, oh, it's 11.45 Eastern Yeah, it's standard. even earlier. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Um, that's so like that's five, even worse. Like at 5.45 I'm thinking about the in, first in the Italy. first game for for the season in Serie B against the Venezia. Anyways, that's, that's inconvenient for everybody though, because isn't isn't that like a 5:45 game in Italy then? Yeah, it, 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 there's some talks around that too. So what the comp, what the club did was saying, okay, for all the season tickets holders, you're just going to pay like a nominal uh, amount of one euro, um, while for all the non-season ticket holders, it's going to be a 20 euro uh, ticket. So I guess it's a it's a way to to it's not their fault obviously for the time that was uh, uh, allotted to, but obviously this is a way to 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 try to to welcome, invite, invoke people to quit their job and go to the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> interesting to see our turnout. By the way, you weren't that far off, Fabri. Our first first game against Benevento in, in Serie B is at two forty five. So. And and the Nates as well, right? Yeah. So actually, that's a good thing that you're you you you're opening up to that one. So uh, season tickets, yes. we are at a, a magical number of sixteen thousand. Pretty incredible. Sixteen thousand. I would have signed for that at the beginning, at the end of the last season. Right. This is amazing. We're far far from the second one. So Genoa is the top. I think uh, Palermo is actually second right now. Serie B. With nine, I yeah. think, yep, somewhere That's around there. That's exactly right. Um, and we're eighth, I guess, overall between City A and City B. It's amazing. Like in front of us, besides Lecce, uh, we have the likes of Milan, Inter, Roma, Lazio, Fiorentina, and Roma. No, I just said that already. And Fiorentina, seven. Napoli, I can't remember. Napoli, yeah, of course. Yeah, gigantic stadium. I mean. Yeah, sixteen thousand is is insane to me that we've sold that many season tickets, and we're also sold out away for the first match of the season at, at, at Venezia. At least for the club allocated tickets, I think is what we have. There are not many, you know. The stadium oh, event like is like out. very small. Yeah. I think it's thirteen hundred, but they were sold just soon after twenty four hours that they were released. So that's just like tremendous, amazing, um, and that's the first match. And uh, but I'm I'm curious about um, a little bit about the turnout uh, in uh, because. 
the, the match against Benevento, which is a Coppa Italia, which is the one on Monday, right. um, is a Coppa Italia, and it's at home. Yep. So it's a working day, 5.45 local time, et cetera, et cetera. But the first two matches of City B, which are the following Sundays or Saturdays, whatever that might be, um, are so Venezia, and that's away. And the second one after that, correct me if I'm wrong, Again, it's against Benevento. Am I mistaking that? No. Nope. Yes, Benevento, Saturday 20th. So yes. Venezia is the Saturday 13th. So, uh, and Benevento, Sunday Saturday 20th. 20th. Sorry, yes, you're right. But this. And then Benevento. Yeah. And they're both, um, no, Benevento's at home. Is it? Yes. Benevento. So we played Benevento two times in the same month. Which is um, good, um, but you know it's 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 a good uh, opening starting test also. Even if it's Serie, it's a Coppa Italia. What I mean? Yeah, I mean, look, one of the more competitive sides I think it's Serie B, and we're starting out that way in the Coppa Italia too. So at, at the very least, you know, I think there were some comments about this too when the schedule came out. Like, it's not like we have a, a brutal schedule to start the season, but we're playing a lot of teams that are in the upper kind of tier of of the league and. It's, it is a little unusual, I guess, to get that draw and then have to play them two weeks later. But at the end of the day, you know, so be it. At least we're getting familiar with the, the rival in the same division. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me that question and saying, aren't you afraid or, you know, worried about that? Ideally, in a way, yes, for sure. Uh, but in another way, w- what I think around that is um, it's, it's important to get these without people knowing too much about Genoa from the beginning, getting these bigger teams from the beginning, it makes it easier out of the way, exactly. So then we can concentrate better also on the quote unquote on the paper, easier matches. Yeah, I mean, look, it could be a little bit of a rough first several matches. I mean, Pisa's in there who obviously almost qualified for Serie A. We play Palermo who look completely different for a lot of different reasons this year than they did last year. Uh, I think they're scary. A lot of people say that they might not do well. Um, I mean, we do play them in September, so we still have a few matches uh, up the belt before we meet, we meet them. But um, you know, it could be still dangerous because right now there's still no, no coach. I think it's like the Primavera coach or something, but yeah, you know, it feels like a bogey game. It's away at Palermo, too. And I think they're actually one of the other sides that have really done well with season tickets this year. Uh, obviously. I mean, their fans are crazy. But, um, yeah, Venezia, Benevento, Pisa, Parma, and Palermo to start the season. So, not an easy match in that in that schedule. Absolutely. And also, reminder for our friends, uh, hopefully we have a lot of North American listeners on the pod. Um, Coppa Italia, I think, is f- through a different streaming service than Serie A. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Copa Italia matches are still available in the U.S. anyway on Paramount+. Plus. I'm not sure how it is in Canada, but just just a reminder for Monday's match that it will not be on Hellbiz, and you may already have a subscription to uh, where you can watch those games. So you actually bring up a topic that is really hurting my, my heart there, Matt. So Copa Italia, I know we don't have any issues because differently from the United States, we have we had... We have still, anyways, uh, Fubo uh, TV, which is actually um, being uh, broadcast by uh, for, for Serie A and Coppa Italia. So Coppa Italia, we're okay. But Canada, like many other countries around the world, does not have anyone that has the rights for Serie B. It's insane. I don't want to use VPN. I don't want to watch the, the, the pirating. It reminds me of the olden days, like before all these cable and streaming services were showing soccer from around the world. Come on, guys. Like, anyways, uh, this is a shout out to Hellbiz. I know I read somewhere that Lega City B gave them their international rights and they will be managing who to give it to and whatnot. Do something. Worst comes to worst, like, you know, even you shared me this amazing thing from the EFL, uh, which, you know, it's a little bit costly. This is a, a small parenthesis for you uh, for um, streaming services in, in the UK. So this is the secondary uh, leagues. So sec- second and third and whatnot, where you pay 
quite pricey. I can't remember how much it is, uh, but it's like in the range of 300 pounds or something like that. I can't remember now, but like 180, but they might have another package that's more expensive or something. for. Okay. All. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 280, 180 pounds. Sorry. Uh, but so that for the, with, it, that's pound British pounds. Right. Um, I mean, mind you, with you guys, British pound and the uh, U.S. is not that different for us. It's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, <That's cool>. <laughs> for <laughs> us Canadians, <laughs> it's still a, a good chunk of change. You're gonna it is a good chunk, but. but but it seems like if you do um, subscribe to that service, you can watch and no matter what platform, no matter where, and uh, and, um, and and you can watch it all around the world, apparently. So that's pretty good. Like it, you you take it with you no matter where you go. Um, so <laughs> Stefano, our director in the background, <laughs> nicely so, he's suggesting, well, listen, you live in Toronto. Why don't you go to Buffalo and watch the games over there? <laughs> I mean, that's true. It's only an hour away from me or even less. But um, I don't know. It depends on the days, I guess. On a Saturday morning at nine o'clock, all the way going out there, getting my my girlfriend to go all the way out to to Buffalo just to watch the game. <laughs> Have a couple of bat blues, yeah. The Bills Mafia will be there jumping. Exactly. Through. Maybe I'll make too many weird friends, right? <laughs> I have a fun uh, Bills tailgating story when the Chiefs were playing there that I'll I'll save for another time. But uh, yeah, yeah, we need, we got to figure out an answer for this one. So. Yeah, I, I tried to reach out. All their answer was, we don't have it. It's in the pen. You know, we're working on it. We'll let you know. But, you know, that means very close to nothing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so season is coming up. I am super excited, Matt. I don't know about you. I'm like, I almost cannot sleep. I can't believe it's here. It felt like the summer was so, like, dead. There wasn't anything really going on. And we're finally going to see the team it feels like it could be kind of fun. I mean, this is the first time in a while we're going to be favored to win most of the games we're playing. Um, so our pair, oh, sorry, just one qu quick mention, like our parent company, which doesn't mention us too often lately, lately anyways, which is Genoani Siresta. Um, we have a, a huge network of all uh, Genoani that are around the world that they have contacted because their platform a, a podcast platform in Italian is to reach out to Genoani around the world. And that's how I got to know Stefano. Um, anyways, long story short is in this chat, we have a lot of um, uh, members from uh, the um, General Club UK, which is probably, I'm going to say the biggest General Club outside of Italy. Uh, and like, we're talking about like 40, 50, 60, and I'm just putting numbers there, but I know it's a huge number of members. There is no rights also for City B in the UK. Like, I mean, Hellbiz for now, just official so everybody knows, um, is only for Italy, US, and Serbia. Forgot the Serbia thing. That's weird. <laughs> Serbia. And uh, and a lot of people complaining because all the friendlies were not shown, but the friendlies are not, not City B, and they only have the rights to broadcast them in, uh, in Italian national soil. Um, but yeah, so what's going on there, Mr. Helbis? Do something, please. If anybody knows anything about Helbis or is close touch with them, please reach out to us so we can go and spank him and talk very closely to them and do something. By the way, for our listeners, we're going to keep saying this like literally every single episode until something changes. So just, just get used to us saying the same thing over and over again. <laughs> just that this is how it goes. <laughs> Well, I know they have to somehow. Anyways, worst comes to worst, it's pirated. Second time, kind kind of worst thing is VPN. I'm gonna have to try to that thing out, and hopefully, it's not like a tight ship similar to the zone that well, even with VPN, I think it doesn't work. But well, worst case, we'll be sharing our credentials. So help us want to make some more money, get in some other markets. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, is there any other news that we want to share? Yes. Oh my God. This is the other thing that is not making me sleep, Matt. The kids. What's happening to the kids? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm like embarrassed to admit that I've been doing this, but I have still been going back to like the Genoa social pages and just like checking like, wait, did they put something out? Has something happened? Uh, which no, nothing has happened. Um, but we know that basically something has to happen. I think this this weekend, maybe this Saturday even, I, I don't recall if it's this Saturday or something, I think maybe this Saturday, 
Uh, but there's some like Serie B, or maybe it's like a uh, Liga Serie B, or I don't know where where it comes from. But the kits and the, the technical sponsors have to be presented at, at a certain time before the season starts, and that's that's basically the time. So we're kind of seeming like we're backing up into a date where we're going to see it no matter what. There may be a presentation. I assume there will be a presentation. Uh, I guess I assume it's going to be all of them because we have to have it all made aware, at least the things we were planning on wearing. Um, I mean, obviously, we've been training in in uh, Kappa kits still. I think it even looked like like the numbers, am I mistaken? Like they were like the old numbers from like two seasons ago in the, That's in correct. the games. So, yeah, so the rumors are going around like crazy. They're talking about trying to and finish everything that they have in the in the warehouse, <laughs> like from the numbers from five it seasons like... ago or, you know, things like that. I mean, they don't have the names, but during the summer, it doesn't really matter having the the, the names as well. But um, no, yeah, it's it's there's a lot of rumors happening. So I can we can list all the rumors, but essentially we don't really know. So I want to say this for sure. We don't really know exactly what has happened or what is happening. Yeah. Um, obviously, some topics we already covered a few, but essentially that, you know, uh, 777 came in, had a whole bunch of things that had to take care of. It was a ship that was basically almost sinking, trying to revamp everything, trying to fix uh, wherever the, the holes were or the potholes were and whatnot. And I think this was uh, obviously on their radar, but it was not necessarily like the main focus because their main focus was mostly around the technical aspects. So the players and whatnot, um, yeah, then the other rumors, right. what's that, sorry? I think their priorities were right in that regard. Uh, absolutely right. <laughs> um, other uh, top, uh, other rumors were the fact of Kappa that the, the contract was going on. Others saying, but no, it ended actually on July 31st with the right of continuing for another five years or something like that. Oh, so wow. I guess there was a little bit of a mismatch or uh, some, some tiff between the two. God knows. I don't know. I'm just guessing, obviously, because if they are rumors, they are rumors. They're not certainties. Yeah. Um, what else? And, oh, obviously, this one is true. You can see that also for other teams. Castor yep. is having, like many other, actually, by the way. So it's not only Castor issue. But mind you, it's a very young uh, organization. So uh, they're, they were used to very small, um, a few teams to, to, to manage, even though they're very vast and they're uh, diverse in their uh, grown type really of... Quickly. Right. They've grown very quickly. So because of that, because of um, logistics issues and whatnot, um, there's an issue also for delivery and, and so on. So that could be it could be a, all of these, uh, all of the above, essentially the issues and whatnot. So, yes, you're right. Uh, there is uh, rumors for Saturday based on the fact of uh, I think the, the rule, which I think comes from Lega Serie A, and I think it wraps for all the other uh, leagues as well. Uh, it, you need to present the kits 20, 48 hours before because then it has to be approved and whatnot. And I think that's where they went with the countdown backwards to say most likely there is there should be a um, presentation on Saturday. So by the time we come back uh, next week, we'll have known the kit. We'll have seen already Genoa playing a competitive match and Maybe we have more contracts offloaded. Uh, yeah, and pr and probably made that, uh, and I'm sure you're with me on that one. Made the, the, also the website go berserk with trying to put as many orders as possible and ship them all abroad too. <laughs> I know. I, I have to like as soon as they open the store back up again, I feel like it's going to crash or something. So I'm sure I'm hearing a lot of people pumped. Obviously, there's a lot of scare, but based on the trend that Castor has showed. Um, it doesn't seem that they are killers of, especially teams similar to Genoa, that are more for the tradition. So yeah. trying to keep, you know, the 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 jersey, the kit as the tradition as possible. Uh, Genoani, some are open to change. Obviously, like the main colors are the main colors, but they're open to different interpretations. Others are very strict on the traditions itself. Um, we talked about it already. Like, I think we're both kind of on the fence of, you know, interested for new things, but obviously still want the traditions to supersede. Yeah, I, I feel like they're going to keep it pretty, pretty traditional, hopefully. And 
um, I wouldn't be surprised too if we saw like a really simple design. Maybe they didn't have a whole lot of time to design it. So we have our just traditional home and away kit, the green keeper keeper shirt, and that's kind of all we need. So everything is possible. Everything is possible. Yeah. Besides, uh, if it's a multi-year contract, they will. If this is the case, they still have opportunities to do and show their splendor in the years to come. Yeah, I agree. First of many. Okay, so I guess uh, this is a wrap for the first half. We're going to go for a quick commercial break and, break, and we're going to be right back with our special guest from... Ba -ba 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 -ba. We'll tell General you Club right New after. The, the famous Daniele. General President of General Club New York. That's right. My name is Fabrizio Cardone, and I approve this message. Welcome back from our short commercial break. Again, I'm still making that promise, Matt, that we have to change that commercial, but it's still there. It's still valid, but it's still there. So I'll, I'll lead you the honors to present our guest. Yes. So today we have Daniele, um, our, the president of General Club New York, actually the, one of the real reasons why I'm a fan. Um, and so really happy to have Daniele. Should we call you Daniele or Savo? Would you rather go, go by... Uh, Go, go with Daniele is the easiest one. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. That was to, uh, such a long story. I don't even remember the, re the origin of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniele, you, um, you and I rushed into each other in New York. Was it like four years ago or something? I can't remember how long ago it was. But I, I can tell you I have the T-shirt of the day that we met. Uh, it was at the Italy run. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the yeah. Italy run during, I think it was the one before uh, before COVID. It was 2019 because I was training to run the 2020 marathon. So yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. It was 2019. Um, yeah, um, so I was wearing a Genoa shirt. Daniela wearing a Genoa shirt. I was like, what the hell? There's two guys wearing a Genoa shirt. What's going on right now? Like, what is this? Um, and then I proceeded to get invited to the group chat and I got messages in Italian for like 40 messages a day, things I didn't understand. I was like, this is crazy. These guys are insane. I love it. Um, but Actually, I have to tell you, the way that I found out about you is because of my wife. Oh, really? Because uh, she was waiting for me at the finish line. And of course, you are way faster than I am. <laughs> she was like, there is another guy. There is another guy with a general t-shirt. There is another guy. She knew that I was trying to build the club back then. I, like It was very difficult at the beginning to build uh, like... Uh, fans to find them and uh, to discover them and then i was like there is another guy there is another guy and then we were running all over trying to look for you and like oh you have the t-shirt i have the t-shirt and that's how everything started it's amazing i love it it was like a bit the best surprise ever to know that uh, we have an american <laughs> fan and uh, supporting genoa out of the it, blue with no influence of anybody it was like uh, it was beautiful <laughs> So far, we found three of them. So one in the States, one in Germany, and one in Holland yeah. that are just out of the blue fans. That's just tremendously amazing. I still like get teary eyes just to think about it. I, I still get goosebumps to think about yes, it. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I agree with you. I remember the first time joining a couple of the, the, the groups at the bar. Everyone was like, are you, why exactly? Like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, you know what? I'm owning this. So... Um, but but Daniela, tell us more about uh, General Club New York. It's I feel like it's grown a lot even since uh, 2019. But how did you get involved, um, and and what's it been like, kind of being at the helm of, of the club in New York? So uh, there is the first stage of my involvement was like when I moved to New York for work. I moved in uh, 2008. Okay. And uh, the company I still work for there is a very large uh, Italian footprint. But back then was even larger, and uh, it was even larger the Genovese presence. Oh, really? Both, unfortunately, not just one side. There were two <laughs> sides, but we don't care about the other ones. But uh, that's that's how my involvement started because someone in the company was in the club, and uh, actually it was Marco Trimarchi. He was uh, one of my closest friends that I had in in New York. And he was like, he introduced me to, to the club. We started to watch games. We started to, to I have the feeling of, you know, again, I've been kind of in a small gradinata, let's say. Unfortunately, I mean, back, it wasn't so easy like now to watch the games that almost any uh, 
any game you want to watch, you can go to a bar and watch it. Back then, you needed to be just uh, the first game or the second game. You have to be, and even then, you didn't know if you were going to be shown because there, I mean, now you go to a bar, there are 20 TVs. In 2008, when I arrived, there were maybe two or three. Right. So it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit different. So it was more like a family feeling. We were like going to home of each other to catch the streaming channel, uh, yeah. uh, sometimes not properly legal. Uh, and, Probably most uh, of the times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the way that's the way we were going. But unfortunately, it was very limited because of the limited resources we had back then. So there was not like the large umbrella that we have today. And uh, the, the club was kind of phasing out, I would say, because, you know, it was limited to itself. It was like just the same people knowing each other. There was not much an expansion of, uh, of finding new people. It was very difficult because everybody was staying home. And uh, I don't feel like there was the same feeling of community. There was like the club was uh, actually started in, uh, in the 90s. In the 90s, I feel like probably even the immigrants coming to the US, they had a much more community feeling. They were all coming together, stay together, living all in the same areas, try to try to build up something because you were alone in the middle of nowhere. In fact, the club in the 90s were like 40 members. Yeah, it sounded enormous. In the 90s, it was pretty big. It was like about 40 members. And then it started to phase out. And then uh, in 2017, actually, Marco left uh, back then. Uh, and some other people I was mostly watching the game with, uh, I was watching the game with, uh, they left. Uh, in 2017, one of the founders of 1991, it was after one of the derbies that we lost. Of course, uh, like uh, Geno is like a phoenix. He always uh, come back from the, from the yeah. ashes. And uh, it was after a derby that we lost with uh, with Juric at the helm back then in 2017. Wow. It was, uh, they asked me, why don't you try to revamp it? And I was like, revamp what? I mean, uh, it's me, another guy, and another guy is in trees. The general club is done. It's three people. There is nobody else <laughs> that I know of. But, you know, it's like, I took the challenge and uh, I was like, you know, let's try. We try with the social media. We put the banner up. So we behave like we were big when in reality we were nobody we were like three people and we had a banner at the stadium it was like it was like a joke kind of <laughs> but that bring attraction so we started to go out to watch games and that's how we meet some of the members because like oh you're a genuine you're a genuine oh we both live in new york so let's meet one of them is ricardo and that's how we met with ricardo and then uh, the chat come up so people uh, started to join uh, not just local new york but a little bit outside so the word spread around spread around spread around and little by little we got interviews from uh, newspaper pianeta genoa that you like it or not uh, secolo that you like it or not but they still give you exposure visibility yeah, yeah. and uh, and that's how we became and now i think in new york we're about uh, 20 if not more and uh, and we have uh, Stefano in uh, North Carolina, uh, that is a member, uh, satellite member. Uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, Francesco has been able to open his own club in Miami. Yep. Now I think something is cooking in Chicago as well, and everybody's in the same chat. Everybody talks about Genoa, so it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. What has come out, uh, it came out much more than what was just the club. Uh, what, uh, what Stefano Gagero was able to be with the Genoani Siresta is... Uh, is impressive like the network they've been able to create is uh, is amazing so just something from a simple idea try to act bigger than what you are it was able to bring people together ideas together and is uh, is really beautiful it's amazing we got to got to tip our cat to, to stefano our, our, our director for that one i think it's amazing. <laughs> it's always like another person from somewhere else you would never expect to find a, a griffone but it's pretty cool no, exactly. Like how we also explained in, in, in the past podcast, it's also thanks to Stefano that Matt and I met and that's how the Lantana was born as well. So it's just like kudos always to you, Stefano, and group, obviously. I don't know if it's all you, but also about the other two guys. Well, and then Daniela too. I mean, Daniela passed me to Stefano to begin with to, to get on the 
possible way to do Genoa Siresta, but I, I don't speak Italian. So that's that's kind of <laughs> how this no, no, that that's absolutely <laughs> true, Matt, too. Like every time when I post something for the Antenna podcast, I always tag both clubs, the General Club Toronto and New York, because yeah. you, to me, you are a representation of the General Club New York in all effect, too, anyways. But uh, yeah. I'm proud to carry the banner. And I'll, I'll say our scarves got a lot of attention in Genoa, too, by the way. Every, everyone. <laughs> those, are, those are some pretty cool scarves. That a lot of people pull me aside and say, "Where'd you get that? Where'd you get that?" So, uh, yeah, actually, I have to. Uh, we have to redo the our merchandise. We have to revamp all that. <laughs> yeah, because with COVID and everything, everything kind of slowed down, and uh, now it's time to come back. Yeah, that's well, exciting. I mean, are you are you looking forward? I know um, we'll be at the bar for a few of the matches coming up, and it sounds like we've got a good. Like, yes, I guess we we got it cover hopefully uh we got to the bar that we usually went uh, lately uh, even if he didn't bring that much luck in the last season yeah. but again i do, i think we were uh, behind <laughs> any need of luck i mean even with all the luck in the world i don't think there was much to be done the last season yeah but uh, so this midfield uh, we've been able to to get in touch with them discuss and uh we will have our uh, our presence there during the season. So even if it's second division, thanks thanks to Albits, we will be able to to show the games there. Hopefully, there is not going to be Barcelona or other uh, teams playing at the same time. So that should be able help should be helpful for yeah. us to to watch yeah. the games. For any listeners in New York or nearby, so Smithfield Hall is where we go to watch watch the matches. And you, if you're ever at the match and you see a bunch of people wearing red and blue shirts going crazy and a lot louder than the giant pack of Bayern Munich or Barcelona fans or somebody else. That's probably us making some noise. So, yeah. Oh, I wish yeah. I could come also during the match uh, with uh, Cosenza, with Rafael. If we could, uh, if you guys could all meet together, that would be amazing. Yeah, probably. I actually asked him, how the hell do I watch the Serie B games? And he was like, oh, don't worry, you're covered. There is Albit. Okay, great. Then Fantastic. We're good. They're good because <laughs> I send them a message. We like, we send each other likes on uh, on Instagram. So, so Daniel, I have to ask you, you mentioned a little bit with uh, Pinot de Genoa and some of the other publications. It's hard because a lot of the coverage, I feel like on Genoa, it's in that kind of realm right now. There's the places that where we get most of our attention these days. But like, I'm curious your take on 777 so far and, and what they've done. I know there have been some different conversations from different opinions from some folks, if they like them, if they don't, if it's right or if it's not. Like, what do you think of uh, of the ownership group so far? I think, I mean, the last season is very difficult to comment. They started and the team was put together uh, in one week, really, by Preziosi, uh, knowing that he was going to sell. So it was just names uh, and that's it. And there was no no build of the team right that's i think it was the biggest mistake of last season if you had the probably maybe i'm wrong and there is no way to be right or wrong i feel like if you were putting the same 25 players in july together and you make them do the whole training with the right coach i'm not saying they would have become fantastic but i think you will have the kind of spirit of team much better than what it was at the end because you put them together last minute of people that didn't want, I mean, some of them didn't even want to come to Genoa. Right. So Caicedo first, and it looks like Fares too. So, but I feel like if he, if he had a little bit more enthusiasm, maybe it was at the beginning of the transfer season and the players were, even with the same characteristic at the beginning of the transfer season, maybe we'll be talking about a different position. So I'm thinking about 777 as like, uh, they are an investment firm. Yeah, I think that's the way to think about it. They bought to one, they took 250 million of debts, right? Something around that. Eventually, they want to make them up. So they have to bring the team back to value at least 500 because they have to make up the 200 plus they have to put some investments on it. They, they want to make some return over time. They say 30 years, 20 years. That's what Blaskes is mentioning. It's a long-term, it's not a short-term investment. So if if I go based on what has been thought, like, okay, one year is not a big deal, which is the same that uh, Wander say at the end of the season. Like, okay, let's see if it's one year, but uh, right. if, it, if things go in the right direction, then uh, again, these people came here to make money. They didn't came to waste money and to throw it in the garbage. So 
I give the benefit uh, last uh, the last six months. Uh, I don't want to count. It was a learning curve for everybody, uh, yeah. starting from the managing director uh, to everybody. The property they made they say Blaske say at Telenor that they made a mistake with the uh, Sevchenko. So everybody does mistake and you give the benefit. They came in, they tried to do their best. They didn't work out because I mean, uh, you get to save Chenko, you pay a, what, 2 million uh, and something. Uh, I mean, I, they didn't want to do the mistake, I'm sure. So, so the, the idea is I try to be, this is the first year that is really uh, what you call in Italy, Banco di Prova. It's like, this is the time where uh, there are no more excuses. You had the time to learn, you had the time to do everything. And I I think right now what they have done is at least for me is very difficult to judge. Yeah. Because I haven't been watching a game of Serie B since uh, 16 years, 30, 15 years since we were there. So I have no clue what is needed to come back. I don't know what the level is of Serie B. I just know the Serie A went down pretty bad compared to where we started. So I assume Serie B should be a lower level than where we have been before. On top of it, ma- most of the of the team, the lineup that we have, uh, I mean, they were playing last year in Serie A with us, and the games with Blessing, we had a uh, salvation. Uh, we should have, if you project the same points, uh, we right. could have saved ourselves. So the players that we had, they were maybe not the best ones, but maybe for Serie B, they're good enough. That's why I'm like, yes, there was a statement of uh, the lineup is done in 90%. Mm-hmm. I have some, uh, I, I wasn't so comfortable with it, but at the same time, I don't feel like I have yet the right idea to judge it. I still like to tell, okay, I'm sure like a, some of the play, like a Yeboah, I'm sure it can do much better than what we have seen. Yeah, uh, and probably it's gonna be even good for him to as a learning curve. Even if things goes well and next year, we are where we are supposed to be. I don't want to say it, but it's a learning curve, and you build up the confidence, you build up the build, you build up the the environment that we need. Because I remember when we passed from Serie C to Serie B, that team was a winning team. Yeah. You just change some things, but you had like a core. You have a zoccolo duro. You had like that uh, that core that was holding you, the Marco Rossi and so on. Mm-hmm. And those they were saying when they were holding you in Serie A the first two couple of seasons. So you need to rebuild that core. And I'm not saying that everything from last season needs to be scratched. Maybe there is something good in there. And uh, I'm sure, considering the end of the last season, that we had. Uh, Blessing uh, and now blessing is there again. Uh, let's see if uh, if things go in the right direction. I don't like to criticize before I see the things done. I like uh, right now, it's too difficult. And today we won nine one, so uh, yeah. something good is must be there. We did nine goal in one game. It's like most that we have done almost in all the <laughs> last season. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the other team, Carrarese, is a serious cheat team, so it's not that much the gap. Right. I mean, there is a gap, but it's a gap. But you're right. Yeah, so we were just talking about it earlier. Like, it's sure it's a Serie C team, but you're right. It's not a Serie D team. You know. Uh, yeah. And let's uh, let's remember that uh, uh, Sutirol has lost against the Serie. That's is true. Yeah, that they struggled. Pretty I'll never remember the name. Something Salah, but I can't remember. That. <laughs> and I think this year in uh, you need it's going to be a very balanced season in Serie B. And I think a lot will be like the confidence and the environment you have in yourself because it's going to be easy to lose with anybody. And it's going to be easy to win with everybody. Kind of because you have the chances to win. Everybody is going to be like very level. So they, you can be one one week uh, like mid table and in two weeks you can be all the way on top or all the way to the bottom in two, three weeks because I feel like it's going to be just for the names that are out there. The names are not the ones that are going in the field. Yeah. I mean, a Palermo, yes, is a huge team, but still, it's coming from Serie C. Right. So, Bari, same. Bari, the same. So there are huge names, but the names are not the one playing. And we know because we have been many years in Serie B, based on our name, we shouldn't have been spending that many years in Serie B. Right. So the names are not the one going and playing. So we'll see, but uh, I really hope that. Uh, we have a good chance. So I know, uh, Daniel, if I may, 
I know that you spent a little bit of your vacations in Genova and uh, just wanted to hear from, uh, from, your, from your experience, from your, your, your past uh, vacation here, uh, what, what's the air uh, in Genova right now? What's the feeling? What's the atmosphere? What's the, what are they saying from a Genova perspective in the city? I would say that uh, the environment for my friends is like, I think everybody has the same kind of, uh, where everybody was thinking maybe that they were coming and having uh, 30 new players, uh, selling all the old teams and having uh, 30 new players. So everybody's a little bit, uh, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. But I, I, as I said before, if you put it in perspective, this team uh, had some player that had some value in Serie A. If they were in Serie A, there must be a reason. So if you put them in the right perspective. So I think everybody is a little bit uh, lost. There is a lot of uh, excitement uh, because there's a, you can see only on, uh, on the seasonal season tickets that we sold, what is we reach over 16,000, right? Yeah. Correct. So uh, only on that, there is the environment. I mean, everybody wants to see. I think everybody can't wait to see a team that is finally fighting to win every game. Right. That's what is the thing that everybody is finally looking forward to. After looking at the games after so many years, where you have been looking like, oh, am I going to lose this one or not? Am I going to lose this one or not? Because we have been struggling for the past five years. So I feel like there is a, somehow a excitement from that perspective. Now we have to win all the games. So it's like, it's a feeling that has been lost for a very long time. So I think that's mostly the from a perspective, from the other part, it's like everybody was expecting to sell 30 people and rebuy 30 people. and uh, But of course, I mean, we fixed the main problem, hopefully, that is the, the forwarder with the coda. Mm-hmm. Now I hope that uh, there is a second one because I don't know if, uh, I mean, again, we have seen Fabil in Serie A. We haven't seen Fabil in Serie B, but uh, <laughs> I have still have many. I haven't, I probably, actually, I haven't seen Fabil in Serie A. Because of the many injuries he had, I think nobody has seen Favilli. I think the only ones that have seen Favilli is Juventus when he was playing in the USA during the tournament, and then he came to to Genoa. So I, that that's the thing is like uh, we need we know that you need a strong team to come back from Serie B. We have seen it the few times the, the times that we won the championship in Serie B. We always had a team that uh, it was a good team for Serie A as well. Uh, even the the infamous year of the Milito and uh, and Stellone for Warder. I mean, that team could have easily saved itself in Serie A. That team was like amazing. And we struggle for whatever reason, but we struggle to get to the end of it. Well, I love your comment about um, last season. Obviously, like we had a lot of going against us in several parts of that, but we were kind of done before the season even began, it felt like. But having the environment aspect is kind of part of the exciting thing too because you're right it's hard to like get <clears throat> thinking about the squad right now and the team that we have it's you get excited about Coda obviously because he's been leading the league in goals the last two years and we've been desperately needing that but we've not had like a, a massive massive addition I mean maybe Il Sanker as a defensive midfielder but it seemed like we kind of had a lot of those um, but maybe you're right I mean maybe really if we're getting all of the Genoa fans behind the club and there's a real atmosphere and an environment and there's, you know, the players are proud to play for the colors. I mean, I think they probably were in Serie A too. It just was a weird environment. You get younger guys a chance to play and we're sticking with the same identity with Wesson, who seems to have the locker room's attention and people are paying attention to him and we're kind of getting rid of the guys who weren't. So maybe that's mainly what we need. And right. With like an investment minded group, maybe they're, why Even because I have my own theory about the previous ownership. I was feeling which each transfer, and we had many. Yeah. Every time you were kind of our red and blue shirt. Every time there was a transfer, it was fading the red and blue from the from from the players yeah. themselves. They were not fighting anymore for the team. Yep. They were fighting to do their own six month, uh, fantastic, and again be transferred to another team. So there was no pride in wearing the shirt of Genoa yeah and that's I think once you rebuild that uh, most of the job I mean I like to think that way I like to think that a lot of the game is done based on uh, 
feelings. And I think once you rebuild that, uh, the feeling of ownership of the shirt, you own the shirt, you're, you're, you're not wearing the shirt, you are owning it. That's, uh, that's a whole different ball game. And it's, uh, it's a different part. So that's what I really count to see this season. I want to see people that uh, wants to wear the t-shirt and they want to keep it uh, for next season. So they're not fighting only for this season. They're fighting to be good enough uh, to stay in the team for next season. Totally. And, and hopefully that, where, where it's going to be where all, everybody wants to be. Do you think, Daniele, that can still happen in modern soccer about the owning the, the jersey? I still think that career is career. There is a career and uh, I cannot say that there is, but I think uh, you have that kind of, they have certain player. You have the star. Yes, it can go and it's gone and we all accept it. I remember when Milito came, he did a fantastic season. He went to, to Milan, to Inter Milan. Mm -hmm. Everybody was clapping. Everybody was happy for him because he did the career. Right. But again, there are certain tier of player that I mean, I, I don't want to miss respect to anybody, but a transfer from uh, Genoa to Turin, when they are all like, if you want to be a mid-team season with the potential to grow a little bit, what's the point of transferring uh, horizontal? Just own the, the shirt, just reward it. But again, there is all of the environment around that are the, the management, the procuratory here and there that everybody chips in from the transfer market. But again, if you have a core, I think what you need, you have a core. You need those uh, five players they really believe. And then the other ones will fall at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like Storaro and a few of the other players, have, I mean, um, Hefty seemed to have some comments too. Like some, some of the guys are saying things that are sort of similar to that, where they want to restore the pride. And some signings, I mean, Coda said something a little bit about that too when he signed about, you know, it's a famous club and, there's the, the fans and, and things like that. So hopefully we see it. I, I'm with you too, Daniel. I want to believe in, in the, the passion for the shirt. And I think that's why, you know, players like Ostigard are, are so well regarded when they were wearing the shirt, because you see that fight every time they're playing. And when you see that together with an entire team and the right kind of complement of players, we're, we should be in a good position. You know, and we are, we are the oldest team. So we are the oldest uh... Uh, supporters of Serie A, we are mature enough to understand if a player, like again, as I say, like Amilita, Tiago Mota, they do fantastic. They deserve to grow, but they will carry their general. We want them to carry Genoa a little bit with them away. So we don't want to have people that just come six months and they disappear. That's that's why I think at the end it is. It's a matter of like owning what what you're doing is not just for the money, but I, I, again, it's very difficult, Fabrizio, you're right, it's very difficult. But you need to find those five, six players. Yeah. They really believe into the cause and... Uh, now, maybe... for sure, for sure, we have the new management, which is not going, at, at least seems that they're not going to be replicating what uh, we saw from the past uh, owners, the owner, so Preziosi. So what i personally i have is uh i want that this love or sympathy that there was for genoa up until x number of years ago may return because all you hear out there is hatred people don't dislike genoa uh because of the different reasons and the porcheria as we say in italian that uh, preziosi has done in the pa especially in the past years and which made just people, and mostly it's about the fact of always being saved to the last game, the last three games, and just struggling for the last three, four years. And that made people just go against that, simp lost that sympathy that they once had for Genoa. Why? Because we were, we are the oldest team in Italy. So, I mean, in, in different factors, and people were just, ha had sympathy for, for this uh, beautiful team of ours. And, and I think that's what we need. Like as the, uh, the new owners, 777 partners have restored some sort of uh, fiducia, the trust that we have now looking towards the team and, and this, that sympathy, that love, that uh, desire, that passion that we have now uh, re regained uh, towards our team. Now, obviously it's, um, as Daniela, you said before, it's up to, to, the, to the team now to show uh, what what they need to do in order to bring it back up to the 
to better levels and to again to be you know liked again yeah. okay if the players are there to stay and not to be transfer it's it's gonna be all much much easier i think yeah. then of course the transfer is there it's it's gonna work out but things are done step by step if the player fights not for just for this season but for the following one and to maintain his position that's that's what we need yeah i think there's like a level two of maybe it's not ownership exactly maybe it's more like um i guess not even sports anymore about the unions of the other the management at genoa but if we're setting the precedent too that we're not going to be doing this six month thing anymore you're on loan again you're out maybe that'll also help frame that mindset of the players of like if you're here to play for us if you're not playing for us you're sold but we're not it's not the same thing as i'm gonna come to genoa to get my playing time and go somewhere else and get a bigger paycheck which is what it's been unfortunately yeah so um <clears throat> yeah i mean we're we're super excited for this season do you have any um any initial kind of bogey games you're worried about at the beginning of the of the calendar or um, even some thoughts ahead of like the Coppa Italia that we're, we're about to... I'm worried about the environment. Yeah. So I want uh, any game. It, I, uh, we need to start with the right foot. Uh, yeah. That, I mean, that's the thing. Is like even just the game of uh, Monday with Benevento, Coppa yeah. Italia. That's a big one. Even if Coppa Italia, it's, uh, it's Coppa Italia. It's, nothing, it's, nothing, it's, it's not the goal of the season. Yeah. But that I think is gonna set a tone. If we start right already the first game of the season, I may be too but too drastic, but it's gonna make the life much easier of everybody because the environment and the uh, and the press are terrible. And they can I the press I feel like they can't wait to talk bad about us. So we need to give them uh, no chance to do that. And uh, and we need to build uh, we need to take away to sh- to take away all that bad of the past few years because if you play for Genoa like a player like Sturar or like uh, like the others you have been playing for Genoa for a while you start to lose all those nightmares and that that comes back so i mean to me it doesn't matter the game honestly it matters uh, the attitude and uh, unfortunately of course it's uh, the end is a matter is a game of results you need to bring the results home so i'm not afraid of the game i'm afraid mostly of the environment that can generate around the genoa if things don't go at the beginning in the right direction i i share that so much i mean like the the downside of the benevento match is it's going to you know if we happen to lose this game, which I'm not putting out there in the world, but if that happens, we're already going to have, you know, everything is going to be under discussion, everything. Yeah. And then you are left with the three weeks of a transfer market where it's going to be just a nightmare, not right. even two weeks. Do we sign enough players? We have to sign more players. Yeah. Are these guys fit enough? Is seven, 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 the right ownership. It's going to be like all of the things at one time. And yeah. God forbid, I mean, I think we've got, um, Benevento, the first home match, then Parma, um, and those again, not not easy matches in City B. So it, it could get. I don't think it's going to turn this way, but we've got to get results. I think. Yeah, we need to start right. It doesn't matter the name; it needs to be. So for me, the all uh, the all games, the first uh, three to four games uh, will set the tone of uh, of the all. And again, well, as I no. say, the season is long. Uh, I think it's going to be very crunch up. So in a mature way, I'm not that concerned. But at the same time, I'm afraid of the environment. As I say, I think uh, the results uh, are mostly for the environment than for anything else. Um, from my perspective, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm against what you guys are saying because I totally agree. But at the same time, I'm not too worried about the first three games. Obviously, that I need to, that the, it has to set the tone, and I'm absolutely for that. In the event there are things that were missed because of whatever reason, um, I still think that we have those three weeks that you were mentioning in order to repair. Because then, if we don't do it in time, even though it can be like a readily available player per se, someone that is not like a gamble, someone that is ready for City of Being or whatnot. 
after that, that's going to be a long one. If you factor in that before the January market, we're going to have like four, eight, 12, uh, 16, 20 games, or well, maybe not 20, but 16 games before the January window opens again. And those are points that are super important if we want to reach the top two. Yeah. Personally, no, I, I don't even want I, to win the week, I, but I think no, what you're saying is right. I, I, when, when some, when I say that, I, when you say that, the, the first thing that came up to my mind is the year of Milito, which we started with Oliveira in front in Cagliari. It was a that. terrible, terrible. Uh, <laughs> actually, the game was, I think Genoa didn't play that bad. It just, we were missing the forwarder so badly. That's right. And uh, and literally, that's exactly what happened. Uh, you, the limit was there, the forwarder was missing. And then we all remember the throwing of the contract up. The last the, second. <laughs> the, the la over the last second, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that actually worked out. So yes, you are totally right. What I'm saying is like, I'm thinking about more of the result. I want the positive. Then I really hope that we get the result and we can see the limits. And then the management is smart enough to do the action anyway, if needed. Absolutely. But that, that will be you putting together the two things. But uh, I'm, I'm really afraid of the environment. Everybody is expecting so much from this season. Yeah. No. And I, uh, I really feel like the environment is going to make a big difference. Yeah. You're absolutely yeah. right. And, and, and I know a lot of fans, like more so like the extreme fans, like the ultra uh, or ex falsa or whatever you want to call it, uh, um, are going to be against what I'm about to say. But I remember back in the day when Bagnoli, used to say that the biggest enemy of Genoa sometimes are the, the fans. When that environment, it goes against everything, it, it's, it's detrimental, it's hard. It's, it's, it's as the Gradinata Nord on the pitch can be the 12th man, uh, the, the Genoani, when they're upset, that can be very detrimental also to the entire environment. And hence, you are right about that environment uh, fear. When, when you start to see the people is kicking the ball and uh, not even getting the chance to reach the ball. And there is people already talking like bad about them, like, oh, he's going to miss it, he's going to miss it. And there, you can hear the, the, the classic Mogugno Genovese oh, yes. all around it. You can hear it uh, and uh, it's going to make the ball uh, wait 20 times more than what it is. And or the whistles when uh, a specific player is, uh, is, is, is receiving the ball and you can yeah. only imagine the weight that that player has in that moment. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the Genoa gives, Genoa takes. That's what it is. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, let's see, let's see. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the Benevento game, uh, and uh, it will be during working hours for us, Matt. I know. I we, we were just talking. we got to figure out how to peel away. Uh, that, yeah. It's 11.45, I guess it sounds like. So are you going to be at, at Smithfield for that or no? <laughs> I actually not working not that far away from, from there, home. but uh, <laughs> actually at my company we have three days a week, so I'm working from home the Mondays and Fridays, so that will make my lunch break more interesting. Yes, yeah, me too. So uh, hopefully this hell biz gets their act straightened up because I'm. I'm I still, but this season will be difficult to follow with uh, so many games on Fridays and Mondays. It's going to be difficult. I really hope that uh, Genoa doesn't end up many times into Friday and Mondays, even to meet up with everybody at the club. Because yeah. the 9 a.m. game, we proof that during the, the pandemic, we have been able to do it. We have been done it over and over and over with our yeah. well, couple of beer. German beers yeah. at 9 a.m. in the morning. But we have been able to do it and to meet because we were believing. I remember the game against Bologna. It was like... We were in four or five when we score, when uh, Battle bad, bad score. Oh, my God. Everybody was turning around. We were like, how many were we, Matt? I like, think it was like six of us, maybe. Yeah, but we scream and shout like uh, we 20. were uh, <laughs> more, 100. Everybody turned around. They were thinking someone was dying. I don't I mean, know. Yeah, they thought somebody was like hurt. Yeah. <laughs> someone <laughs> else. Yeah. <laughs> So, but we we prove over and over we can do the 9 a.m. But uh, Mondays, Friday for work, it's difficult. Yeah. 
it's that those are the tough ones. I mean, I actually, I think I have to look at the schedule again. I think we have at least like one less weekday game than in Serie A last season, which to me is like insane that we had that many weekday games last year. But you know, I mean, we used to always gripe about the Derby games being scheduled on like Thursday night or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. What are we going to do? We'll deal with it. Our the passion thing is, goes beyond the time. And the, yes, uh, the passion will still be there. Um, uh, even I'm, uh, what I'm also um, looking and seeing that the, the, the club is also, the management is anyways looking at this as well. So it's not their decision when the matches are in specific days. And this fact, for example, that uh, we, we talked about it earlier on, but the fact of uh, dropping the prices for the second t- season ticket holders in order to lure people to come to the stadium with one euro and one it's a, it's a nice gesture and it's very important to bring people at the stadium and essentially you know it's not that because they don't want to make money but at the same time they understand when it's tough for people and that's a good way you know to to bring uh, people to the yeah. stadium as well in that way they introduce themselves in the best way possible i mean in general since they came in they give free tickets they give uh they did all the right things and marketing wise they did all the right things i mean uh yeah, nothing, nothing to say on the marketing 777 they've been uh, promoting the stuff in the best way possible we are just missing the the new t-shirts but that's another story <laughs> i'm looking forward to it because i want to buy it i mean i need a new logo i need a t-shirt with a new logo i'm looking forward to buy it i can't I, like it, it makes me it drives me crazy but uh, it doesn't matter how it is I may, I may like it or not i need the new logo yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. i need a new logo so <laughs> Uh, it's like seeing the players playing with the kappa still pit is it kit uh, uh, on on their uh, like on the, the the kit that they're wearing from kappa from last year and the numbers i'm sure there are years ago. i'm, sh- like, come I'm on. sure there are good reason for that and i i it doesn't matter as long as we have something to i i, I can even paint them for them red and blue and uh, let them share i was actually it's okay but uh, i'm looking forward to those as well yeah worst case we'll design our own i guess um well daniela it's been awesome having you on is there uh how can if anybody wants to follow general club new york or or get in contact like uh what what are what are the, our, your handles the easiest way to get in touch with us is uh, through the socials so facebook and instagram are the two of them and uh over there you find uh, the phone number as well to contact uh, me directly so if you are visiting uh, new york uh, just let me know, and uh, if the game is up, we see it, uh, and hopefully, otherwise, we come back with something. And as I say, merchandising is coming back, so uh, you can come back home with a good scarf, hopefully, at least. There you go. I love it. That's fantastic. By Instagram, otherwise, uh, uh, you can contact the email address of the club, the Genoa Club New York, uh, uh, at uh, uh, gmail.com. So, Genoa Club New NY. At gmail.com. Love it. Fantastic. Th- thank you very much, Daniele, for being our guest. This was an honor for, for us uh, to have you over with us. The pleasure it, is it's mine. A, it's a great experience uh, for, and it's actually a good uh, point of reference also for a lot of fans out there. As you said, not only with uh, with uh, the, the the traction that you found throughout the years of your your, your presidentship, but I'm sure that also thanks to the podcast and whatnot, it's always good to have like the, that point of reference and it, it's very important as well. Yes, and uh, so, I'm looking forward to listen to all your podcasts because it's really, really entertaining. And uh, well, I, I appreciate I, I, it. I always forget to say that, right, Matt, that we are the first and I think still only <laughs> podcast entirely in English about Jenna. So that's super important. And yeah, I, I always forget that, but it's important. We gotta. We should, we gotta... We should use it in Genoa to teach English. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Stefano was it. saying that. Stefano yeah. was saying that. <laughs> I like that. All right, thank you once thank again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to us to us again. Episode eleven has come to a conclusion, and we're looking for us to see you next week after the first match from Coppa Italia, and we'll talk all about also the first match coming up against uh, Venezia at Venezia for the new coming exciting season of Serie B 2022-23. Thank you, everybody. Forza Genoa. Forza Genoa. Forza Genoa.
listen to La Lanterna, a spotlight on Italian football, a podcast powered by Genoani Siresta. Thank you for listening and see you next week. <laughs>